thought do you guys put into symbolism or theme and things like that when you're writing? Because you know, I, I write, I've written a lot about Katrina, and, and people read that and they're like, "There's this theme of like water," and I'm like, "It's about Katrina." So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wondering how much thought you put into that because I think it's interesting when, when people put their own thoughts on that and, and kind of bring that out in, in a new light that you didn't even think about when you were writing it. Um, for me, in the first draft, I don't think about it at all. Not at all. Um, when I teach, I have to talk about writing with the door shut versus writing with the door open. So for a first draft, I take all these things I know and that I teach and all the tools that I'm aware of, and I shove everything out the door and just write the story and the character um, and not filter myself in any way. And then you sort of gradually open the door, and you do start to think about, well, what, what are the symbols or the images that are working here? Are they working? Um, do they feel forced? That sort of thing. So. I write a lot of drafts. My first draft is, um, as I said, usually very messy and not all that close to the final draft at all. And then with each draft, it, you become more aware of how you're using setting to develop the theme or what, whatever the situation is. So um, again, it's a layering process for me. But I think the best themes, I mean, it is great when you're on panels like this and the moderator says, I love the way you did this. And I'm like, yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> you didn't even know you were doing it at all. I love that. Um, and I think that there's something to be said about it just being an organic thing that ha you know found its way into the book versus I think we've all read those books where you can feel the author's hand at work pushing things on you. Um, and then you become aware of the author and you're not aware of the book anymore. So I think if you can avoid that, things will find their way into your work. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I usually don't think about theme or symbolism at all. Um, a lot of people, um, and they're, I think that's great, but they, they look at, like the unicorn in the story, they, they think of it as a metaphor of something. But when I was writing it, I really pictured a really unicorn. <laughs> um, but, I, but I like it, though, when people come up with these weird things that are really personal to them. Because I think that's what it is. You bring your own history to what you read. You bring your conceived, your preconceived notions, of, and and you find you connect to what you connect with, and that's what you that what that's what becomes the focus. And I think that's great because I, I think it's a successful piece of writing when you can get so many different takes on on it. Um, but then you know I like my editor the, in the book. She was like, you have mentioned birds in like four stories. Do you want to do that? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, but I will leave it. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think I can add anything that they haven't already said. Yeah, I, do, I absolutely do not write with theme or agenda in mind. I sort of write my characters and then what happens, happens. Certainly in subsequent drafts, you begin to think about what the implications of things are. Um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't start out that way. It'd be hard for us to write about Katrina without water. What's the name of the story? Yeah, sorry, this is for Unwell. Um, and I ask this as someone who's had a sort of strongly lover relationship with myself and as a short story writer for many, many years. You mentioned that you're aware of yourself as the last man standing among the short <laughs> stories, uh, not connected to a novel. And early this year, I know you had a sort of hyperventilated response to George Saunders, the kind of December. Right. Uh, going back to Katrina, 
Um, I like to tie things together. I think his success is, is allowing people to cast some light on other short story collections. I don't really believe that I'm the last person who will ever sell a collection unattached to a novel. I think I got incredibly lucky that I hit an editor who at that time could make that offer and get it past her publisher. Uh, but I am not the only lucky person, uh, and it's also not just luck, hopefully. But I, I do think that, that there's, the thing about short stories right now is that there's, they're not being paid attention to, and because of that, the people can do whatever they want to with the short story, and they're doing really interesting things, and I think slowly that's starting to, to garner some attention. Um, I, if you talk to people in publishing, though, they will still say that a short story collection is uh, kind of DOA for, mo for the most part, uh, because people don't really buy them. Uh, people, uh, you know, and the Times article was saying that with smaller screens and shorter attention spans, people are reading more short stories, but I don't know that there's any evidence to actually back that up, and I've never read a short story on my phone. I've written, I've written one. <laughs> But I, but I don't think that I don't think that it's all doom and gloom because they're still getting they're still getting published. I was published there uh, like uh, Karen Russell's book came out to a wide acclaim. Um, I'm uh, on a panel uh, on Sunday that's all about the short story with uh, Danielle Evans, whose collection is really good. Uh, and there there are writers who uh, did not do the form like Jess Walters who isn't really a short story writer, and Tom Perota, who's also not a short story writer. Uh, Jess just came out with a very uh, well-received uh, collection, and Tom Perota, he is publishing one soon, and he's a big wig with Little Children and Left Behind, uh, not Left Behind, Left Leftovers, the Leftovers, the Left Behind is the other uh, uh, series. Um, anyway, so it's, I think it, there are people who are returning to the forum, and there are people who are really good at the forum, and they're starting to get some attention. So I think it's kind of a, a mixture. I don't think it's as bad as Laura Miller says it is, but I don't believe it's as good as the New York Times wants it to. Uh, ladies, and, and well, <laughs> thank you very much. You've encouraged me beyond belief. I've spent uh, four years in an emergency psychiatric unit and nine years in prison, where I cataloged tattoos, ironically. <laughs> and so I, I wrote a book about Katrina, and um, I think I want to meet your uh, crackhead agent. He's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> William Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know anything about psychotic criminal and tattoos. Uh, I'm an expert. Okay. Thank you. You like to bring things full circle too, I see. Yeah. There's one, there is. Yeah. Hi, my name is Summer Sullivan, and you've all been so wonderful. Thank you and insightful. I wanted to ask you, do you um, recommend um, a writing program for um, someone who is in their um, early career and aspires to write? I mean, I think if you can do it, if you can afford the time and and the bills, um, it's for me. It was wonderful. I did my MFA in a small program. There were six of us, and it was really just an opportunity to do nothing but write and not feel guilty about it or have to explain yourself, right? Because I always had jobs also while I was writing, and so you know, you're like, well, I'm a substitute teacher, but I'm also a writer. You know, you're always kind of justifying um, yourself, and so. As a grad student, you can just say, I'm a grad student, and people you know, kind of nod their head. But I think if you can do it, it's great, because you're going to meet um, you're going to meet people that will play a large part, you know, a large role in your career, not necessarily in the networking side of things, but they'll be the ones that say, go write another book. It's OK. And you, you'll need that. I hate to tell you, but probably you'll need that down the line. There's a lot of rejection involved in this industry. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity to create a community. Um, and it's like any profession, you just have to practice. And so for, for me, grad school was an opportunity to practice for you know, three years to do nothing but practice the craft. Um, and you're going to learn something different from everyone you work with. So the more teachers you can find, the better, I think. But it's also not necessary. 
you know, there's other opportunities and other ways to do it also. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I think I think certainly my experience absolutely changed my life, and so so certainly, um, and so certainly I would never kind of be in any way sort of MFA disparaging. I do I do think, however, though, like when when people have asked me, especially people who are really young, I say don't do it if you're going to go into debt, because yeah. mm -hmm. because yeah. it's just it's just yeah. not worth it if you're going to go into debt because it basically like an MFA prepares you to do nothing. But teach. Yeah, but, and, but, and it's wonderful because it gives you this incredible gift of time and it kind of makes writing the center of your life and that is of inestimable importance. But it is not a degree like, I don't know, an MBA or something. You know what I mean? Like you can't do anything with it, you know? And so, you know, if, if you're sort of at a place where you're like, you know, I sort of need to kind of center all of my energies and do this thing, then I think that that's great. But but I would I would really caution people against racking up debt to do it because it's not a useful degree in the usual sense that things are useful. You know, and there are free things. You can go to Yaddo, you can go to McDowell, you can go to you know, there are all kinds of residencies and things like that that you might be able to sort of piece together to give yourself breaks from your life and to kind of center writing. But you know, that's my sort of mixed view. Now you went to Columbia and studied there. Would you recommend that? Um, well so I didn't become the writer that I am at Columbia, but I started to become that writer and because of uh, the exposure that I had to all the different, like Columbia, when I got there uh, and I went to the first orientation, I looked at the big crowd of people and I was like, oh, this is how I got in. They let everybody Because <laughs> <laughs> it was a program of 35 fiction students, which is pretty large. I think Iowa also has a fairly large, but I don't know if it's that, that, that big and I was not expecting that, but having so many different fiction voices in the program, I was exposed to their writing, but also to their influences, especially the people who I became closer to and trusted that they would introduce me to writers that I would not have introduced myself to. And the same with some of the professors. Uh, the workshops were, were excellent. I, I thought that they had, and I think Columbia right now has a stellar uh, faculty. Um, but I, again, I, I didn't come away. I spent a lot of money. Well, I haven't spent it. I owe a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else spent it on my behalf. Uh, and uh, I did not come away being able to save somebody's life, which, if spending that amount of money, a poet friend of mine said, I should be able to save someone's life, which is to greed, and the money that I've spent, especially the poet, I can't imagine being a poet and spending that much money. Um, uh, so, there, don't, yeah, I don't know that I will ever pay off the debt that I have. Um, my kids will eventually. <laughs> but I think it's important, though, to, to, if you don't enter that kind of a program, because uh, you can, you can educate yourself, but you have to find the right way, to and you have, to, you have to read a lot, but you have to read widely. You know, that was the thing that, that formed me as a writer, is that I read so much more widely than I had been. Uh, that's where I was introduced to George Saunders, that's where I was introduced to a number of short story writers, and a number of different novelists who are now my go-tos whenever I get stuck and I, I need some kind of inspiration. Uh, and I got that from the faculty and from the people who I was in workshop with. Uh, so find, if you don't go into a program, find other writers, but also writers who will push against the thing that you were working on and kind of stretch you. Uh, because before that, I did involve myself with writing groups, but they were writing groups who were more like, mostly just encouragement, not as much stretch. And I think to become a writer, you need to be stretched. Well, I urge you to get these wonderful books and read them. They're all available at the bookstore outside, and I hope you will join me with me in thanking these guys. Mm -hmm.